before the Pope's arrival, crowds had gathered at Entebbe Airport. In the customary manner, the people of Uganda prepared to greet the pontiff. This was the first time that a reigning pontiff would set foot on African soil. For the nation, and especially for its three million Roman Catholics, the arrival of the Pope by VC-10 was the biggest event since independence from Britain seven years ago. For all the happy cheers of his welcome, the Pope was in Africa on serious business. Uppermost in his mind was the bitter two-year civil war between Nigeria and Biafra. But President Milton Obote and four other African heads of state who greeted him did so as hosts to the pontiff whose visit had first been planned in order that he might dedicate a shrine to 22 African martyrs. And so, in an open Lincoln continental, Pope Paul VI began his historic journey into Africa. The Pope arrived at Colono Terrace, a holy place on a hill overlooking Kampala. There, he and 50 other bishops and cardinals were to celebrate an all-African mass at the vast 5,000 square foot altar to mark the consecration of 12 black bishops. It was a moving and meaningful service within a faith that in Africa is changing, seeking to break its identification with the colonial past and find its place within the emerging nation. In Africa, the Roman Church is growing fast. Estimates number its adherents as between 30 and 40 millions, by far the largest Christian body in Africa. The Pope's grueling schedule continued. Wherever he went, there were crowds to cheer his progress. From the Kololo Terrace, Pope Paul drove in sweltering heat down into Kampala, where a special session of Parliament, attended by five African presidents, those of Uganda, Zambia, Tanzania, Rwanda and Burundi, plus heads of diplomatic missions and parliamentarians. President Obote told the session that the papal pilgrimage to Africa had widened the horizon of human relationship. The Pope, speaking, he said, as a simple man, believed that today's conflicts between peoples could be resolved in better and more certain ways than through violence. The following day, at the partially built shrine of the Roman Catholic martyrs, a hundred thousand people had gathered for the mass of dedication. Twice during his brief stay, the Pope had met with Nigerian and Biafran representatives in a vain attempt to mediate the conflict. The troubled soil of the African continent received the papal blessing, but the mission of peace was unfulfilled. 